wish for it or you can work for it. You gotta work for greatness. If you ain't working, you should be working. Let's work. These are the confessions of a workaholic. 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 Welcome to Confessions of a Workaholic, where we share the success secrets of fearless female entrepreneurs who are obsessed with success. This is your girl, Coriel, and you are totally in for a treat because we have a true boss babe in the building. This episode is brought to you by The Inner Circle, a personal and professional mentoring program for goal-getting women. For more information on how The Inner Circle can support you and your success, visit MajorKeyMentoring.com. Today, we are talking to Gabrielle Deculius. Did I say that right? Deculus. <laughs> Deculus. Okay, Gabrielle Deculus, creator of Business Rules for Women. Gabrielle is known for delivering results with experience in branding, marketing, public relations, fundraising, and more for both nonprofit and for profit businesses. And she has a ton of success secrets to share. Gabrielle, are you ready to confess? Yes, I'm ready to confess. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Okay, so. Of course. So I always like to start by asking what your professional background is, because I find it so interesting how our passions sometimes lead us away from our profession. So what exactly did you start your career out doing? I started my career in college with a few friends. We saw a need uh, while we were in college to create like a space that we could um, not only have fun, but feel some purpose behind it. And um kind of highlight some of the, the, the people that we went to school with doing cool things. And so it started back in 2008 um, with Nightcrawler LLC. And I was the creative marketing director. And um, we had a whole team of really awesome um, friends that were also in college that, you know, did some photography and other creative things um, to make it happen. That's where it all started. And so since then, you've had a ton of titles, a ton of different roles. You've worked in tons of different capacities. What were some of your favorite roles? Um, and then what, which one do you feel like taught you the most that you're now using as an entrepreneur? Favorite roles? Um, probably, well, most definitely working with Habitat for Humanity in South Atlanta, where I was able to step out of my comfort zone of being in Houston and um, help them develop you know, ways to uh, reach the community through experiences and help put people in a pipeline to continue to support their work. My, um, I'd say one taught me the most or the one that I actually appreciated the most is the one has been, that has been most constant, which is so being a social entrepreneur. Um, being a social entrepreneur pretty much encompasses everything that I've done um, from the beginning. It's given me the opportunity to do good, answer the needs of the people, and also be a businesswoman or a boss at the same time. Um, it's wide open wide open, and not limiting. You know, that's, that's by far the, um, the best title role that I've ever had, and I will continue to have forever. So within your different roles and responsibilities and within the different um, positions that you've held, um, how have relationships played a part in your success? Because I like to believe, or what I've learned, I guess, um, is that your your power is in your people, not just who you know, but who knows you, who's willing to open your email, who's willing to answer <laughs> your phone call, who's willing to take your meeting. That is what really um, changes the game for a lot of people is, you know, their relationships. So how have relationships played a part in your success, both within corporate America and kind of on your own, within your own business? Relationships have played a huge part in my success success, from opportunities and partnerships to reality checks and accountability. We can all work like crazy on what we care about, but we need people. Um, without people, um, we have connected with and seriously cultivated relationships with, we're not able to reach our full potential. That's how I operate. That's what I believe. And that's what I preach. That's what I tell people every day. So what would you say has been more beneficial within your career? Would you say mentorship or relationships have helped you to create success on your own? Definitely relationships in my experience. I am still trying to find 
out how to have an effective mentorship uh, relationship in my life. Um, I definitely have a few people that I reach out to for their opinions and for feedback, but I'm still figuring out where I am 10 years in the game um, as an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. What does mentor- mentorship really look like for me um, and how I can reciprocate um, with a mentor and have a beneficial relationship? So at this point, overall, just, you know, intentionally connecting with people and building relationships, I'd say is been more beneficial um, in my success. So, and I love that you mentioned before um, how it's all about cultivating relationships. And I think the word cultivate is like the perfect word because you can't just start a relationship based on what you need from somebody, what even necessarily what your end game is. Sometimes it's just about starting that foundation, making a connection and seeing what happens. What are some tips though that you can offer for purposeful um, networking or connecting, like not just going to a quote unquote networking, even and passing out all your business cards, but actually <laughs> cultivating a relationship. What are, what's some advice that you can offer for someone who maybe is an introvert or struggles to, you know, small talk or meet new people? Ironically, I just got back from um, a retreat that I do twice a year called the Ignite Retreat. And I did um, a new workshop this year and it's called Grow Your Team. And in this workshop, usually, um, you know, that word networking keeps ringing, but this is how I pretty much, you know, ran this with them. And this might be a little lengthy, but I, I have some tips and I just want to kind of frame it a little bit for you if I can. So in this workshop, I had a bunch of college students who want to want to develop community and role changing businesses. But all of them said how hard it is to walk into a room full of strangers. And I reassured them that I still have that anxiety sometimes as well. And that there's a few things that I have developed and my friends have developed um, to feel more comfortable and to go in and, like you said, have some purposeful networking. So number one, change your idea of walking into a room of strangers and passing out cards to walk into into a room full of opportunities and meaningful connections. You have to change that whole idea of networking initially. Otherwise, it's extremely intimidating and it's not going to be beneficial. You're going to spend more time by the bar and less time actually telling people why you're there and and so on and so forth. The next step is um, before you walk into that room, you need to get clear on what makes you unique and why you are going. You need to ask yourself, what do you want? What are you after? And what do you need? Number three, you need to define success. What is success for you going to XYZ networking event? Maybe it's finding five friends with a startup to form a masterminds group. Or maybe you need a graphic designer. If you don't have a goal in mind, it will be hard for you to gauge how beneficial it was to spend your time, energy, and money there. The next step, next step is um, when you're there chatting with all of your skills, your wants, and your needs in mind, and on the table at this point, ask how you can help them. You want to display, you want to display genuinely that you're here to intentionally connect and grow with people. Number, let's say 4.5, remember their details. Remember their name, remember their goals. Um, maybe you will meet someone there before them and you'll be able to be the, play the connector at that, at that point. Or in the future, you can play a connector and help them find what they're looking for. People absolutely love when you think of them and you remember those types of details. And then, of course, the last step, number five, keep the momentum going. Follow up, save their birthdays in your calendar, invite them to future events. I believe that's how you can genuinely grow your team and develop meaningful connections and to, you know, perfectly network. I think if you do those things, you will totally, um, you know, see a different result from stepping into those types of spaces. Okay, well, stay ready so you ain't have to get ready. You definitely 
gave me a, <laughs> like I type no care. I'm gonna have to turn that into like a little blog uh, from this episode. That was really, really good. And I Thank that you. is one question that I feel like comes up so much because like you said, you do end up wasting an outfit, standing by the bar, leaving with all the business cards you came with or feeling like, okay, what did I get out of this? But it's usually because you aren't intentional. You don't even really, like you might know that you want to meet people, but you're not sure about what you want to do with those people that you meet, what type of people you're looking for to meet, what, you know, like what it is that you want to get. And the more intentional you are, definitely um, the more successful you will be with making those Mm -hmm. real connections. Um, And remembering details, um, I think is definitely, definitely crucial. Make somebody feel special, you know, by remembering, Mm -hmm. um, you know, those special things that they told you. And of course, following up, I think that that's one thing we fail to do even if you collect absolutely 15 business cards they end up like <laughs> dirty at the bottom of your purse and then what good, you know what good was that it still ends up being a waste so that was really really good if y'all did not take notes definitely hit the rewind go back write down those five tips and take them with you to your next event and then it's not just an event you can literally use these tips everywhere, like at the grocery store. All the time, store, all at, the time. Yeah, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Use these everywhere. Um, okay, so what are two books that you believe every entrepreneur, no matter what their industry, what their expertise, two like life-changing, game-changing books? Yeah, so the first book was a validation book for me. Long story short, I adopted social media super early. I grew up with everything, the black planets, <laughs> the MySpace, early versions of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. I've been on it. I've tried it. And one thing that I've always done was show my work. And I used to get a little backlash from that. People didn't understand why is Gabby always taking pictures of what she's doing, you know, where she is and, you know, um, telling her story. And people initially... <laughs> would even, you know, make little comments. I get wind of it. Oh, she's, you know, she's showing off this, that, and the other. Well, I read this book called Show Your Work by Austin Kleon, and it gave me the official stamp um, for myself because in this book, he talks about the importance of you showing your work. And that's what I had been doing, and I will never forget that. So I highly recommend um, every entrepreneur read that book, especially if, if you're apprehensive about, putting things on social media, people fall in love with your, with your process and your progress. So check out that one. And then the second one, um, was really eye opening for me. So a lot of new information and it's called launch by Jeff Walker. And it talks about launching your businesses, uh, in the digital world and how you can truly be maximizing, um, all of the resources that the internet gives you. And how awesome it could be to grow your business with leads, conversions, and so on and so forth. So those are my top must-read entrepreneur books. Love it. Okay, so if you had to write a recipe for success, and this recipe could only include three ingredients, (laughs) what would your recipe be? Okay, let me think. Um, First and foremost... Be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace. You will need that throughout your entire life, no matter how you define success for you. Be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace. Number two, um, empathy, because you can't give yourself grace and not give other people grace. And I feel like if you keep those two things in mind, that at least gives you peace and um, perspective. And then the last thing I'd say, consistency, never give up, stay true to your goals and um, you'll see growth come from that. No matter what the goal is, no matter what the task is, consistency is key. That is so true. And I think consistency is one thing that is often overlooked um, because people always say, well, how do you, you know, how do I get more followers or how do I make more money? And I go to their website and they haven't posted in months or I go to their social media and they haven't 
shared anything new. Like they have nothing new. They're not consistent. They're not doing anything, not even the wrong things consistent. They're not doing anything <laughs> consistent. Right. And, and I'm like, you have to, if you're not into what you're doing, you're not going to be able to get other people to get into it. So that's definitely one thing I think is, is overlooked um, and definitely very necessary. If you think <laughs> back though, to like over your 10 years um, in business as an entrepreneur, can you pinpoint like that one thing that you did that really, really took your business or your brand to the next level? Like maybe that one person you met, that one opportunity you had, um, one marketing campaign that was really, really successful, maybe a partnership. What would you say or can you say that there was one thing that that was like a game changer for you? Um, I'm definitely not an introvert, but I learned throughout my journey that there was not a lot of people for me to talk to um, that I felt like could relate that was in my immediate circle. Um, I didn't know if it was because I wasn't talking to the right people or I wasn't expressing, my, I wasn't expressing myself um, in a way that other people could understand and or connect me with other people that were experiencing the same struggles with entrepreneurship. And overall, I was just fed up being alone. And that's how Business Rules for Women was birthed. I decided that I was going to create um, content that grew from my frustration. And it was therapy for me in many ways. And it, it was all posted on my personal social media page. And the response that I got from being transparent and creating action-driven bullet point, bullet point like um, content I mean, just, just, I guess, I don't know. It awoke <laughs> everyone that was on my digital network, my Instagram network, really, to, um, to really start pushing me. And I was getting crazy amount of feedback. And I was still posting on my, on my personal page, just using the hashtag, this is rules for women. And then three years later, it's a, it's a global digital brand. Um, and so I'd say that it was a moment for myself where I reflected and I was, I was fed up with it. And, um, I took that chance of putting my, my deep inner thoughts out there into the world. And that changed everything for me. It's so, um, I think rare that you meet people who are willing to be their authentic self or tell their truth or share, you know, like what's really, really going on and not just what they want people to see or the, the um, perception that they want people to have of them. And, and I, of all the times I've asked this question, nobody's ever said that, but I could definitely see, you know, just your authenticity being um, the reason that people connect to you or the reason that people are drawn to you, um, especially when building a personal brand. And even when you're building business rules for women who, when you started it, nobody even knew who was behind that page, like for so <laughs> long, but you were still being authentic. You were still connecting. You still were able, you still managed to, to make that connection without he, even having a face, um, behind it. So that even yeah. goes to show, you know, you know, Coriel, it was never meant for my face to be on it, even to this day. You know, you can probably pinpoint five photos out of a thousand that actually, you know, has a, a personal message for me that shows exactly who I am. And then I'd say it took me a couple of years to even put that it was founded by me in the bio, you know, and um, it's just never really been about me being in the spotlight. It's about being a resource and letting women know that we're all here trying to get it. We all have frustrations. We all need guidance. We all need a good laugh every once in a while. We all need tools. We need to be connected and supportive of each other. And um, that's what Business Rules for Women is about, creating your own rules and doing your thing. So in addition to being a resource, in addition to being inspiring, you're also a beast when it comes to marketing because you grew that thing. Like I was watching it because I had no idea who it was. <laughs> I mean, I was trying to figure it out. You know, I'm one of those people who I'll do a little stalking. If I have a question, I'm gonna try to figure it out. I'm not, I'm not good with holding on to things I'm curious about. So I was digging a little trying to figure out, you know, who's liking the pictures, who's always commenting, who is it? And I couldn't figure it out. So you are a beast when it comes to not just social media marketing, 
marketing, but marketing um, period, that's what, you know, a lot of your experiences has been in. What's one tip that you can share with um, an entrepreneur who may not have a big budget for marketing? What's something that they can start doing right now, just where they are? What's something that they can start doing that will change um, how, how they're getting exposure or how the world sees them? Number one, um, that word networking, like we said before, is about connecting. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. So social media um, marketing, um, it's you, you have to either if you don't have the time, I mean, if you don't have the money to budget, you need to budget some time. You need to be interacting with people and showing them that you're a brand that has um, great value, resources, something that they want to keep up with, um, that consistency piece. Honestly, I spent a lot of time and a lot of free trials <laughs> on figuring out different ways to keep people engaged on Business Rules for Women. Now I have affiliate partnerships with, with those companies that I had trials with that I couldn't afford back in the day. So you have to realize that there's tons of uh, resources out there. You have to do the work. You can't just post a picture in a, in a cute status of nobody's going to see it. How are people going to see what you what you posted? How are they going to see what you have to offer? You have to interact. You have to create a dialogue. And so I'd say if you can't budget the money, budget the time. That's a really good tip. If you and you gotta have one or the other. If you don't have either one, you don't have a business. Like if you don't have time or money, you're not going anywhere. Like you are literally going nowhere fast. And and I think that a lot of people spend time complaining about what they don't have instead of being creative with what they do have. And so, like you said, if all you have is the time, you better make the most of that time and figure out mm-hmm. how to do your own, you know, graphics, how to do your own website, how to be creative, how to be, you know, resourceful. Um, but you got to have one or the other. So with Business Rules for Women, you provide a ton of resources for working women. What are some ways that you are helping women to gain exposure and build their business through social media specifically? I absolutely love this question. Anytime someone reach out, reaches out to me and they're like, well, why should we work with you? Or what value do you bring? And how do we know that, you know, you have real followers or you have real email contacts? And I say, give me that budget that you give Facebook to reach women in between 19 and 45 in the U.S. and or abroad. And I guarantee you I can triple the results. We have zero issues with people getting leads for um, for their cool products, their solutions, their webinars, their dialogue, their ideas, we do that. So some of our offerings um, that we that we have now available, currently available, is one-on-one coaching from me, business consulting, business consulting with me, live sessions through our Instagram profile, um, which of course we keep up for 24 hours to give you maximum exposure advertisements as well, video and graphics. Either I can do it and work with you or you can do it and submit it to me for feedback to make sure that we will optimize um, the, your presence on our on our social media. And then also marketing packages for the people who are ready to put some consistency um, out there in front of our audience and, and do things on a quarterly basis or on an annual basis. We have solutions for you. And so if they're interested in one of those um, options, how can they contact you? For you those can contact me. Yeah, for any of those things, you can contact info at businessrulesforwomen.com or you can visit businessrulesforwomen.com or you can go at businessrulesforwomen on Instagram. So in addition to all the work that you are putting in, you also have a huge heart for the people. You were the recipient of the Hometown Hero Award from Beyonce and Essence Magazine, which I think is like totally a big deal. (laughs) You should be so super proud of. Why is it so important for you to give back as you grow and see success? So I, you know, personal mantra, you know, personal inspiration, you know, for myself every day is that I cannot imagine being here on this planet 
being so blessed and that blessing others, I think it's so important to leave this world better than I found it. And um, we all have a story. There's many things that occurred in my childhood and as a teenager um, that in, that really plug these things in are stamped in my mind permanently. And um, that particular award was given to me because my hometown, Baton Rouge, was flooded last year. I'm from Baton Rouge and so experienced Katrina. My parents were just impacted by Harvey. So as you can imagine, um, hurricanes is just something I will not allow uh, to take down my people in any capacity or floods. And I currently live in New Orleans. So uh, that's just that's just deep in my heart. But outside of that, um, I just I raised some money for Baton Rouge, um, specifically the neighborhood where I'm from, which is uh, lacking resources. I raised about thirty five thousand. We gutted homes with volunteers. We drove to Oklahoma and, and, and got about five hundred you know, backpacks for I think it was. Was it 500? I don't know. We got a ton of backpacks, a, a van full of backpacks, brought them back for the kids, uniforms, all these things, because, um, you know, these communities seriously just cannot handle um, that type of impact. And I was very surprised when I got the call um, that uh, Be Good and Tina, Tina Knowles and Essence and the whole Essence family wanted to do a big event in Baton Rouge and they invited me out and I was one of the recipients of the Hometown Hero Award and yeah, that was a changer and it was on my birthday. Like I was just like, what? It's crazy. So anyway, I don't do it for the for the recognition, but it's always great to, um, to be honored. And that makes it even more special when you know that it's coming from, you know, a good place and you're not just doing it so you can say you did it. Um, right. I think that that makes it even more special to really, truly be recognized for, you know, something near and dear to your heart. Um, but Gabrielle, I have truly, truly enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> and I know that my ladies listening appreciate all of um, the gems that you've been dropping, all of this inspiration. Can you please let them know uh, where they can find you online and how they can connect with you on social media? Absolutely. So you can reach me at gabrielle.deculus at G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E dot D-E-C-U-L-U-S on social media, that's also Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can also, of course, email me, um, info at businessschoolswomen.com. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. Thank you for allowing me to tell my story as well. And um, I appreciate you doing what you're doing, Miss Co. Thank you. I appreciate you. I have definitely, definitely enjoyed this conversation. I have taken crazy notes. Um, I got tons of tweetables and quotes. This has been another game-changing episode of Confessions of a Workaholic, meant to empower and encourage you to get that ass to work. You already have everything you need to get everything you want if you are willing to do the work. Thank you so much for tuning in. For advertising opportunities, please email ads at Coriel.com.